All right, uh, since we uh, added a couple of batteries, we're going to have to uh, reprogram our charger for a higher voltage. Again, we like about 3.6 or 3.7, 3.75 uh, volts per cell. And we've added uh, four cells um, to each string. And that's going to um, pick us up about 13 and a half volts. So our nominal voltage will go from 104, 105 to about 120. Our charge voltage in our various stages, we're going to go for 130 volts on stage one of our charger, 133 on uh, stage three, and 135 volts on stage five, and kind of hold that there and let them top off. Uh, again, this is some of our front battery pack. And this is our RS-232 connector where we plug in a laptop to do that. And that's pretty straightforward. Adding a couple of batteries, I think it's a good time to talk about battery management systems. And uh, I've uh, actually uh, been accused of not knowing anything about this um, and ignoring uh, all the advice of uh, the people that are out there. Uh, in truth, we've spent months, whenever not working on the electric car, I've been looking at the battery management issue or battery monitoring issue. They refer to them as BMS systems, and about half the population considers that battery monitoring, and about half of them consider it battery management with sort of a vague idea of what that is. Battery management in lithium-ion cells has to do with the fact that you want all the cells in the string to be approximately the same, which they can't entirely be. Uh, they, the cells naturally have varying internal resistances and uh, varying uh, capacities. We've found uh, cells that range from about 95 to as high as 104 amp hours um, per cell, which I'm very encouraged by because we bought 90 amp hour cells. In all cases, they've exceeded it, but they do vary. And so in using the pack, discharging it to drive the car, and in charging it um, to um, uh, return, return the energy, um, there's a possibility of imbalance. In practice, it hasn't been as bad as uh, it's been portrayed, and it hadn't been as bad as I've expected. In fact, I've been amazed at how well these batteries, uh, they actually seem to grow in balance as we use them. In adding two batteries, we kind of have to get them in tune with uh, the rest of them. And I do this uh, kind of by charging the whole pack until it's in that sensitive zone about 3.75 volts, where we start to see large differences between individual batteries. And then I take the batteries we've added and either using a, a resistive load, bleed off some energy, or a simple 12 volt charger, stop the charge process and add a little bit. It's kind of a manual process, but you usually only have to do it once. Battery management, people fall into two camps, balancers, active balancing and battery monitoring. Now let's talk about active balancing because that initially was my uh, favorite uh, role there. Uh, active balancing is where you either shunt voltage or shuttle voltage from cell to cell to make sure that all the cells um, are the same voltage. The uh, my initial take on this was a design that I did of a flying capacitor uh, board that used fairly large capacitors and MOSFETs to switch back and forth between cells. Um, to do uh, essentially a five cell board, I devised this and it worked uh, great. It was uh, about $400 in parts and uh, was uh, fairly large. It would occupy the top of each of these batteries, um, posing some problems of fragility and, and so forth um, without further work on cases and it starts to get into the weight in the room of the, 
of the car, but with um, now 18 batteries, that would have been um, about $6,000 for the balancing circuits, um, which the, the batteries are only 9,600, um, and so that was kind of a dead end. I then looked at what a lot of the RC helicopter guys do for active balancing, and that is uh, shunts to bleed off a of voltage uh, current um, across cells that are higher than the other ones where they're all the least common denominator. This is a little wasteful of energy, but worse than that, it's quite dangerous. Uh, and we've had at least two instances of people trying to devise these shunts who have burnt electric cars to the ground. And part of it is simply a perceptual problem, and I gotta confess I shared it. I've um, devised four or five of these that actually work quite well. Uh, right up to the point where they uh, burst into flames and melt metal. And um, the problem is that most of the regulatory uh, circuits that are available uh, are a little bit subject to thermal runaway. Um, you can limit that with uh, resistive elements and lights and so forth, but then you've simply moved the heat. They don't go into thermal runaway, but you wind up with a lot of heat anyway. And so heat in enclosed areas and crowded together um, is kind of a problem. And the basis of the problem is that these cells can put out a lot of current. And you have to bleed off quite a bit to be able to do any good uh, balancing them. And um, so after a number of experiments and some successful circuits, I've decided that I really don't want a current shunt operating on the top of my battery at any point, but particularly uh, at the point where I go inside and go to bed. Um, and that seems to be the, uh, the failure mode is uh, people that are charging at night, which many of us do, and relying on these current shunts uh, burn their car and sometimes their house to the ground and it's simply a function of these are not camera batteries and they're not radio controlled helicopter batteries. They contain an immense amount of power and so can put out an immense amount of heat. A failure of your um, active balancing system is much more disastrous than a failure of one of your battery cells. And so I've kind of walked away from the whole concept of active balancing of these cells. And what that uh, gets you down to is uh, the monitoring side. And we have actually purchased uh, at a cost of some $2,400 in one case, about $3,000 in another, um, the battery monitoring system that comes from the manufacturers of some of these batteries and looked at some others that were fairly ingenious designs. There's a couple of basic problems. First, I wind up with a Linux computer and a big screen in my cockpit. And I really don't want one there. Um, I've, um, I'm not a computer Luddite. In fact, I've, most of my adult life has been spent with them. And that's why I know um, the problems of software in any event. But they wire them in to display the precise voltage of every lithium ion iron phosphate cell in the um, car. What we've found is that, that these um, batteries uh, are actually quite well in balance and very small variations can be made to show up fairly effectively.